Your sales are down. Is the sky falling? What should you do? My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I'm going to give you 11 things to check to see if your sales are down for a good reason. Let's dive in. All right. So reason number one, you've got the Lost Dogs page on one of your key ASINs. It's your best seller. And all of a sudden, you have a listing yank. Uh, so if you see the lost dogs, that's an official yank. You're going to need to do a reinstatement. By the way, we help with those over at MyAmazonGuy.com. Reason number two, a suppression. So you can find uh, suppressions inside of your fixture products drop down um, while you're logged into Amazon. You can go to the inventory page, hit search, suppress, and inactive listings. That'll pull this up. And if anything shows in the search, suppress section, I have none at the moment, that's gonna be the challenge. Now, the thing about this is, even if it doesn't show up here, that doesn't mean it's not suppressed. Um, I have done videos for the last three years where I talk about hidden suppressions, and they're a challenge. So one of the quickest ways you can just figure this out, see if there's any challenges, just grab any one of your products, grab the ASIN, go to amazon.com, and just hit, type it in and hit enter. If your product comes up, like mine does, you're good to go. There's no suppression. So this is a manual way to check for suppressions. And this can be done on every ASIN super easy, fast. And you know, you want to put your best sellers through that list and check for suppressions. All right. So number three is the loss of a category. Now this is an infrequent bug. This doesn't happen very much. But if your item no longer has a category, that is usually a problem. So you can see the category in a couple of places. The first is on the product details section, and you'll see when you look at the BSR section, you'll see bath soaps right there. That is my category. Now, if we go to the back end of the listing, you can see um, right here, uh, well, I gotta move my camera. So right here in uh, the sales rank column, you have to enable this column by clicking on the preferences for columns and then hitting sales rank and then going back. And then in here, you can see the category. So if this isn't showing up, that's a problem. Um, also, let's go ahead and go to that same ace and we were looking at here. I'm gonna hit edit and I'm gonna go into the products and what we're gonna look for, oh, lovely, I found a little red error there, safety warning, no, whatever. Um, and in here, I won't be able to hit save until you clear all, clear all those red airs. Gotta love Amazon sometimes. But if you go to, typically this is in the product details section. It's not always, every category is a little bit different. Uh, but you go down to the item type keyword. Sometimes this is called something else as well, depending on the category you're in. And if you don't see something filled in here, that is a problem. You do need to get that fixed. Category must be present or you're gonna be in for some sales slump. Sales gonna go down if you don't have a category. All right, what's closely related to category is this thing called BSR, best sellers rank. This brings us to number four. If you don't have a BSR, that's a problem. So there's a few ways you can check this. One, scroll down to the bottom of the page, just like where I was at. I've got number 264 in soaps, BSR is present, no problem there. Uh, another way you can check, you can use a tool like Helium 10, where you get a Chrome extension, and this blue line right here is the sales rank. And if we go to the hit the all time button and we see a blank, so right here, it was blank between 1213 and 1218. That was probably a stock out. But if your BSR goes blank and you're in stock, that's a problem. That's not a good thing. All right, so this is a top selling soap on Amazon. It's in the top 15,000 BSR for well over a year. It's, doing, it's a good product, it's doing really well. But if the BSR disappears, we know that's a problem. That's a really big problem you're gonna wanna take Take note of that. You're going to want to get that BSR fixed. Sometimes the BSR is blank when the category is blank. So those two are kind of intersected. Um, but also, if, if you don't have a BSR, it could be for this next reason, which is you're out of stock, which is what happened to me right here. If you don't have stock at FBA, if you don't have stock, period, you're going to lose sales. That's obviously going to cause a sale. Slump. That's one of the most obvious reasons. But sometimes people uh, forget to check ahead of time, like, hey, I'm going in the holiday season uh, and I'm gonna have a stock out event because I didn't ship enough stuff in. And so that's easily the number one most preventable issue on our list is never go out of stock. It's like the golden rule of Amazon. And the second rule is kind of like the first rule and that, no, it's like, seriously, never go out of stock. That's the second rule, right? So first two rules are basically the same. 
don't go out of stock. And the second rule is definitely don't go out of stock. If you don't go out of stock, you're going to be in a lot better shape. Seriously, it's a really big deal. Next on our list is a little bit of a fringe scenario, but if your brand registry gets revoked, that's happened to me, it's happened to dozens of my own customers, that's gonna cause sales to slump as well. You can lose A plus content, you can lose your brand store, you can lose access to sponsored brands, and a bunch of other things that brand registry brings. Hijackers can start showing up. That's another thing you gotta check for, but brand registry usually protects you from hijackers and some of those other cursory things. Brand registry appeal process, super difficult. I've got a video and a guide on how to do this. It took me like five weeks to figure out how to crack that one. So like, let me save you a bunch of time. Go check out that video next. Our next issue on the list is advertising. If PPC turns off or slows down, or maybe you made some really bad changes, you're gonna be in a world of pain. I've spent about a million dollars of my own money selling on Amazon, specifically on sponsored product ads. And here you can see my lifetime history here with the 47% ACoS, which is okay in my category for gift giving um, just because of the high margins. So <clears throat> if your advertising turns off or if your ads get banned, that's going to turn the spigot off. Your sales are going to crush, go way, way, way down. I had the number one um, organically ranked wine glass on Amazon at one point, and the ads got banned. My sales went off a rocker, uh, lost 60% of the sales immediately. Within two weeks, about 10 days later, uh, I went from organic slot one to position 44. I never recovered after that. Very, very bad when ads get banned um, or if you make a mistake where you underbid, you, you, you're like, man, my ACOS sucks. I'm going to cut my bids in half. And then all of a sudden your sales are in half. Well, that's correlated. So one of the things I really recommend you do when you're doing advertising is to take advantage of bulk sheet backups. To get over here, you're going to put your cursor on sponsored ads, click bulk operations here. And if you didn't know, you can actually download all of your current data. So this current data is going to have your bids, it's going to have all of your spend, all of your campaign names, et cetera, and it's going to put it into an Excel file. Now, why would you do this? Because if you make a mistake at some point, you can revert it by doing a weekly backup on your PPC bulk sheets. Now, if you hire an agency like my Amazon guy, we're going to do this automatically. You don't have to even ask for it. Why? Because sometimes we make the wrong decision and we need to revert backwards in time to fix the bids. And it's all a guessing game. We, you know, we think we know what we're doing sometimes, but everybody's going to make a PPC mistake at some point. So this is why I highly recommend you come in and you download a spreadsheet and back stuff up because it's just going to prevent you from making mistakes. Um, and so if sales went down and you lowered your bids too much, you can come in here and quickly revert it without having to go in and adjust manually hundreds of campaigns. Next on our list is stranded inventory. So stranded inventory is something that happens to us all, no matter, even if you don't make any mistakes. Uh, sometimes Amazon will check your products in wrong. Sometimes uh, they'll get checked in and flip to FBM. It's so weird. I don't know why it happens. It just does. Sometimes you're loading a data feed from a third party source and they just tinkle something a little bit wrong, and all of a sudden it's showing up in stranded inventory. So you want to check this. This is a super fast check from your inventory dropdown. Go to stranded inventory. If you see anything in here, you need to fix it. I have like a dozen videos just fixing stranded inventory, so you can check those out on how to fix those if that comes up. The next reason sales can be down is seasonality. Now, I sold a lot of seasonal gifts. I love selling gifts because they're easy. They usually have lower returns, higher margins. The problem is, is they're very seasonal. So check out my mom box here. This was one of my most successful launches I've ever done. I sold $144,000 in the first 30 days. You can prove it yourself uh, by going to my BSR report from 2021 here. And I got to the top 687 products in all of home goods. So it did really, really well, was super happy about it. Now, but if you look at the rest of the chart, it doesn't look so great. I never got back to the top 687. I got back to the top 5,000 uh, in 2023, but man, this chart stinks. Uh, sales not ever as good, and they're only good during May and December. 
every other time, pretty bad, like just super bad. So seasonal products can have an up and down, um, and it's, it's very, very difficult. You should also note that holidays especially have bad sales on Amazon. If it's Cyber Monday, that's not a holiday. That's a shopping day, to be clear. Black Friday, that's also a shopping day. That's not a holiday. It's a shopping day. Those days are fine. But Thanksgiving, Labor Day, July 4th, Memorial Day, you could come up with a bunch of other holidays. And I'm here to tell you that sales are always worse on holidays. They're never good on holidays. Best days of the week to sell, Sundays, Mondays, followed by Tuesday through Saturday. But Sunday and Monday are like good, almost every single category, almost no exceptions. Sundays and Mondays are great. But other categories will have a slight, slight modest uh, difference on some, some of those with those opinions. At the end of the day, though, seasonality and holidays, that can really affect sales. You don't have control of this one unless you're selecting a product based on this factor. Our 10th issue is going to be the buy box. Now, this usually doesn't happen to people, but there's two reasons it does. Reason number one is that they are a new seller and they don't have enough sales on the account. And so this add to cart button just, just doesn't exist. And you have to like add to cart to see the pricing. And it's super weird. Um, usually about 20 sales later, that clears itself up. Another reason, though, is if somebody could find this item cheaper on, say, eBay or Walmart, Amazon will take away your buy box because they're a monopoly and they can do whatever they want on their own platform. And, and Amazon's half the economy, so sorry, but not sorry, according to Amazon. So those are the top two reasons. I do have a buy box cheat sheet, though, you might want to check out. You can type into your browser, myamazonguy.com slash buy box. That will 301 you over to this. And this graphic here indicates everything that can affect the buy box. And it's ranked order, super easy to read this, and explains what they all do. So these are all the things that could affect buy box that could uh, prevent you from having an issue. Typically, though, is when you're not an FBA, you raise the price. Um, actually, that's a third big reason is price raising. If you raised your price recently, you could lose your own buy box. Because Amazon's like, ah, you're price gouging, which they created that during the COVID era, which is super stupid. But um, those are the reasons why buy box issues can occur. And then finally, our last issue today is negative reviews. If your item goes from four stars down to three and a half, that is the kill kiss of death. Your product is going to start uh, suffering from sales. You need to maintain higher review ratings. There could be all kinds of reasons. You might need to go check your NCX rates or your account health, see what's going on with the product. Maybe you shipped the wrong item in. Maybe Amazon checked it in wrong. There's a lot of reasons product reviews will start coming in. It is very difficult to remove product reviews, so try not letting them get negative to begin with. Um, but we have about a 3% chance in removing negative product reviews. I do have a guide on that. Um, you could even Google this one, just say product review removal guide, my Amazon guide. It should pull up my website with this nice little nifty guide on how I did it, plus a video that walks you through how I filed those tickets. But again, 3% chance of removing those, very, very difficult. So don't let those get negative to begin with. Those are all the quick highest level, about 11 tips there with all of the reasons why sales can go down. If you like this video, hit subscribe. Watch these other videos that I've kind of mentioned during our conversation today about fixing stranded inventory and fixing yanked listings and a bunch of other catalog troubleshooting things you're going to want to check out. Thanks for watching.